Hello. Welcome to the stream, everybody. All right, let's try this again. So, uh, attempt two at beginning of this Let's Play because um, I had a power outage last time because uh, the big, big ass thunderstorm decided to blow through and literally blow a tree out of my yard. But that's beside the point. It's time for another RPG Let's Play, and it's time to continue the Final Fantasy franchise. So we finished Final Fantasy 1, and, uh, well, the only logical step forward is go to Final Fantasy 2, and that's what we're gonna do. So, uh, before we get into this, uh, after... So, so, the first game ended up being a pretty, pretty good success in Japan, I would say so. Considering uh, one year after the first game released in 87, in 1988, Final Fantasy II uh, was released. And let me just mute this because it's restarting the intro scene. Uh, and yeah, also uh, remember 1988. Over here in the US, we didn't get a Final Fantasy game until 1990, and that was Final Fantasy One. So the first game came out two years after the second game came out in Japan. <laughs> Very silly, but funny. <clears throat> and in fact, Final Fantasy II never came over here initially. There was plans for it because there are like uh, screenshots and uh, page scans from of uh a, a uh, english localization in some sort of magazine back in the day but it never came over here uh we got a final fantasy 2 on the snes but that was actually final fantasy 4 but it was only the second final fantasy released over here so they called it final fantasy 2 but uh we didn't get the actual final fantasy 2 over here until 2003 on the playstation 1 on the first PlayStation. In 03. It was, uh, it was bundled with Final Fantasy 1 in, like, I, th I think it was called, uh, like, Final Fantasy Origins or something. Uh, close, Ludo. 6 was released as 3, not 5. So we got 1, 4, and 6, originally. Um... But yeah, Final Fantasy Origins, and then it came out for... It got re-released on the Game Boy Advance, alongside Final Fantasy 1, uh, called in a bundle called Dawn of Souls. And then we got, uh, for the 20th anniversary of Final Fantasy, a, uh, I think these were released simultaneously, but separately. We got the PSP version release, which includes extra content, and that's the version I'm going to be playing today. Hooray! PSP version of Final Fantasy 2. And then, obviously, recently we got the uh, Pixel Remaster, which is not what I'm going to play because it has less content, so. And also, this is the version I own. <laughs> so, we're going to be playing Final Fantasy 2 for the P Sony PlayStation Portable. And, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Let's switch our scenes here. Let's turn the volume back on. Switch our scene. Boom. Here's the title screen, Final Fantasy 2. Ooh. But, uh... Yeah, NES HD. That's basically what the Pixel Remaster is. So, we, we do have a save game, because of my first attempt at this, but I kind of lost all that. So we're just going to start a brand new game. And, uh... Much of the design of everything is going to be the same as uh, Final Fantasy 1. PSP, because, I, again, these were kind of released simultaneously, I think. Wes never got Mother 1. Until much, much later. Now we got, now we know it as Earthbound Beginnings. Anyways, here's our language options. Here's our character cast, so... Unlike the first game, where the, uh... the protagonist party was a group of unnamed un uh classified as in like their their class uh soldiers we actually have characters with names this time so we have Furion, we have Maria, we have Guy and we have Leon. I can change these names to whatever I please. I'm not going to though. <clears throat> cuz uh continuity, I guess. I don't know. I I like to stick with the official names cuz 
<laughs> Excuse. <laughs> I'm weird like that. So, let's get started. Let's start the timer, and let's get this intro going. A long-lived peace. Amongst people. Obviously, this game uses the same uh, pixel art as FF1 PSP, so, again, it's gonna look similar. Anyways, a long-lived peace is at an end. Dun dun dun, fireballs, oh god. Oh, they have faces and they're screaming. The Emperor of Palamecia has called forth monsters from the underworld and has begun his campaign for world conquest. Absolute bastard. A rebel army arose in the kingdom of Finn to thwart the Emperor's plans. And so they go. But the rebel's castle fell to an all-out assault by the Empire. I think that's something we saw in the uh, the FMV. Which is ripped straight from the PlayStation version of this game. Like, completely unedited, which is why it was a little crusty in its CG. Left with little choice, the rebels withdrew to the remote town of Altair. Hey look, the world map. Cute. Four youths from Finn also found themselves fleeing the Imperial forces. They had lost their parents at the hands of the Empire. But their escape wasn't over. Dun dun dun. And here's our first bit of gameplay. We're thrust straight into a fight. So, uh... We have the same command system as Final Fantasy 1. We have attack, magic, defend, items, and flee. They all do the same thing. Uh, but, um, we're just, we're just gonna attack these Black Knights. And by we're gonna attack these Black Knights, I mean we're gonna get our shit pushed in by these Black Knights because, uh... We were supposed to lose this. Scripted loss, whoa. Oh no. I, I guarantee someone has hacked this game in one of its versions to see what happens if you win that battle. If not, someone should. I'm sure there's like, you would have to really fuck with the game to be, or, to be able to win that. Yeah, you just fucking die at the start of the game. Game's over, roll credits. Okay. We get uh, a quick little uh, epileptic warning and... <laughs> epileptic warning. Epileptic bit. And it's time to read. Will he live? He will. I sense a strong life force within him. He should regain consciousness soon. Hell yeah. We're live, baby. You found them like this on the escape from Finn. Fallen from terrible wounds. By the time we brought them here, I feared it was already too late. <laughs> Flashbangs. <laughs> Funny. Wake the fuck up, Flashbang! His life is not in danger. This sigil will strengthen his life force. We should let him rest now. Of course. We'd best be off to the meeting. I imagine they're already waiting for us. The Empire is allowed to complete the Dreadnought. They're building in Bafsk. Bafsk. <laughs> Their attack will begin in earnest. We cannot sit idly by and watch. Must act. Act they shall, maybe. Eventually, probably. I don't know. Anyways, we're just gonna snooze here for a while. Just kidding, we're awake. Where am I? By the way, the characters actually speak. The the Warriors of Light never actually spoke, but these guys do. Leon! Maria! Guy! I did still can't get over the fact that one of them is named Guy, and I really want to call him Guy because of Guy LaDouche. From uh, MXC. Where are you? Whoa. I'm not a voice actor. Furion, you're alive! I, I thought... I thought you'd... Uh... It was a very depressing beginning of the game, by the way. Very depressing opening scene. I'm fine, Maria. 
You are right too, guy? But, wait. Where's Leon? Oh, Princess of Finn, save us. But, Leon not here. For some reason, they made Guy an airhead. <laughs> At least in the way he talks. Don't worry. I'm sure he's okay. I'm not controlling the game yet, by the way. This is all, uh... All cutscene. In-engine cutscenes. Whoa! I don't know. Hmm, so you've regained your strength. Very good. Yes, cat. <laughs> you make YouTube content flexing that he's rich. No, he just hits on girls and gets, uh... Punched. Your life force is strong indeed. It was you who saved us, wasn't it? Thank you. Forgive me, your highness, but... There is something I must ask of you. Please allow us to join the rebel army. No. <laughs> oh, I could never allow such a thing. You know nothing of battle. You would only be throwing your lives away. You should return to your homes. But... We have no homes. Not anymore. I think Maria is just the depressed one. I can relate. The Imperials attacked. And our parents. Our parents. Or maybe it's more trauma. <laughs> I think it's more trauma than anything. I'm truly sorry. But even so, this changes nothing. I cannot permit you to join our army. You've nowhere else to go. You're welcome to stay here in Altair. If you know our password, you should be able to live here well enough. The password is Wild Rose. Remember it well. So here's a new uh, mechanic that was introduced into this game. Uh, key terms, basically. So if an NPC ends up uh, mentioning a key term in the game, you can learn it like that. And then you can ask about it to other NPCs. The Wild Rose is the insignia of the Kingdom of Flynn. Or Finn. Excuse me, Finn. I keep wanting to add an L to the, uh, the Finn for some reason. Uh, it represents our hope for a future that flourishes in both strength and beauty. But what will become of Finn now? I've heard that the Empire's captives have been taken there and suffer even as we speak. Maria. Your brother Leon is missing, is he not? It's possible that he's being held in Finn as well. But Finn's far too dangerous now. The Emperor's beasts still stalk the streets. Gaining entrance to the city will not be easy. The man on my right is Minwu, the white wizard who tended your wounds. Speak with him before you leave. Maybe of some assistance. Okie dokie. And finally, I can move the game, really control myself, and also turn on some options. Like, fast messages, and turning the dash on. Other than that, you can also turn off character portraits, which I'm going to keep those on, obviously. Uh, we can change our window color. Basically, anything we could do in the first game, option-wise, we can do in here. We also have the bestiary. Um, We'll get into the characters and their abilities and stats and how that the game handles that uh, later, but not right now. Let's talk to Minwoo. Hmm, I see your destiny clearly. The future it holds seems closely entwined with my own. You will begin by journeying Finn, to Finn as the first step towards realizing your fate. I'm just gonna make it more. <laughs> you wasted no time using the password. Heed well the information it will bring you. You can learn much of value by listening. I offer you one more bit of advice before you depart before Finn. Those who have fallen in battle can be revived at a sanctuary. Should one of you fall before you reach Finn, go without hesitation to the nearest sanctuary. I will do that. Actually, I think the instant text is a little, little, little too fast. Let's let's say, do, do it to three, so it's like a quick scroll. So, uh. 
yeah, well, I'll, I'll mention this when we get into the truly into the meat and potatoes, but let's let's talk to everybody first. So the Port of Palum lies not far east of here, but a lake separates us, so you won't be able to reach the town without a canoe. That sucks. Oh, this is the Rebel Army's war room. War! Yeah. Heading to Finn, are we? That's not my place to tell, you, to tell you where to go. But I'd reconsider if I were you. It's a dangerous place to be, you see. The city is crawling with the Empire's monsters. To the north lies a small village called Gatria. Judging by the look of you, you'd be lucky to make it that far. And before you go anywhere, I suggest you visit the room with the sigil that saved your life. There you'll find people who can teach you a thing or two about adventuring. I think you're gonna need all the advice they can spare. And we're gonna get that advice, I think. But first we're gonna go this way. And uh, just kinda travel around. Little, uh... <clears throat> keep here. Hello. This is the King's Bedchamber. His Majesty was sorely wounded in the flight from Finn. Oh, he's been resting here for some time now. Oh, damn. King? Hello? Uh, an arrow struck me- Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you for the resub, Survivor. Appreciate it. Uh, anyways, back to the King. An arrow struck me in the back during the battle, leaving me in this state. Uh, perhaps I really have grown old. My daughter, Hilda, now serves as regent. You should speak with her. Yes, indeed. Uh, there's another room, empty room, someone's room. It's less weird than Jesus. <laughs> no. Anyways, here's the sigil room, uh, or as I like to call it, the tutorial wizard uh, party. So let's let's talk to these wizards, shall we? It's time for tutorials. Oh, shall I tell you about treasure chests? And a lot of reading on my part. <clears throat> ah, treasure chests can contain things like items and gill. This game's currency. Many treasure chests also hold rare items you'll not find for sale in any shop. If you're lucky enough to come across such items, hold on to them. But treasure chests aren't all gill and glory by any means. Some chests conceal monsters lurking within. There's no way to know what's inside a chest until you open it. But monsters often accompany the especially good loot. <clears throat> Indeed. Uh, next, if you'd like to hear about monsters, yes. There are many different types of monsters. Some monsters are vulnerable to, vulnerable to certain types of attacks. For example, the undead are weak against fire, and aquatic monsters are weak against lightning. And you'd Final real life too. Final or life too. Uh, thank you for the resub cue. <laughs> yes. Just like in real life, the, unde the undead are weak against fire, and aquatic monsters are weak against lightning. However, there are also monsters that absorb particular elemental attacks. Casting fire on a monster made of flame will heal it instead of doing damage. You can damage zombies and other undead with restorative magic like cure and items like garlic. Uh, but be careful when using spells that steal health or magic, such as drain and osmos. When used against the undead, these spells can backfire and hurt you instead. There's a lot about the undead in that. Mr. Bugatti. <clears throat> uh. Anyways, would you like... Would you allow me to teach you about key terms? Yes. In the course of a conversation with someone, a particularly important word may come up. When this happens... Just like Wild Rose. When this happens, three commands will appear. Ask, learn, and items. Select learn to commit the key term to memory. You can then use ask to ask people about any key terms you've learned. Keep in mind that only certain words can be learned in this way. To show someone an item from your inventory, select items. When you learn new words or find rare items, you should ask people about the words or show them what you found. <laughs> would, you like to, would you like me to explain the formation command to you? Yes, please, do this, because this is new <clears throat> in the context of Final Fantasy 1-2. <clears throat> Excuse me, fuck. Use the formation command to assign characters to either the front or rear row of the party's battle in formation. 
Characters in the front row can attack using any type of weapon. Characters in the rear can only attack using bows or magic. However, they are also safe from direct attacks. Assign each character to the row that best suits his or her abilities. We have a front row, back row system. All right. I'll, uh, we'll, we'll get into that when we get into that. I don't suppose I can interest you in a lesson on magic. Yeah, sure, why not? There are two schools of magic. Black magic, white magic. White magic specializes in healing and support spells. For example, cure... Do that. Cure restores lost health and life, revives characters who've been KO'd. Black magic, on the other hand, specializes in offensive spells. Blizzard deals ice damage, thunder deals the lightning damage, and so on. Characters can learn both black and white magic spells in any combination they choose. However, a character can only learn a maximum of 16 spells. You can use the discard command. I almost read that as discord. <laughs> you can use these commands in discord. <laughs> You can use the discard command to remove any spell a character has already learned. Discarded spells can be learned again, but their levels reset to 1. So, discard spells with caution. <laughs> I knew someone was going to type the discard command. I knew it. Would you like to learn about armor? Yes. There are four types of armor. Shields, helms, body armor, and gauntlets. Shields are equipped in the same fashion as one-handed weapons, in either the right hand or the left. Since wearing a shield only requires one hand, you can also equip any one-handed weapon along with it. S should you so choose. Tongue Twister. You can equip two shields, one in each hand. This makes it impossible to attack, however. Helms are equipped on the head, gauntlets on the hands and forearms, and body armor, of course. On your toe. On the body. Provided you can afford it, you should always keep your party protected with good armor. Indeed. Now, what would you say to a little lesson on skill levels, eh? Skill levels can be divided into two broad categories, weapon skill levels and magic skill levels. But wait, there's more. Call within the next 10 minutes, and I'll double your order of skill levels. Yes. <clears throat> also, I see what you typed there, Ludo. Funny. Ah, uh, nose. Weapon skill levels are divided by weapon type, such as swords and axes. Similarly, magic skill levels are divided by spell. Spells like Cure and Fire each have their own skill level. Attacking with a given type of weapon improves the corresponding weapon's skill. As your skill levels rise, your attack and accuracy with those types of weapons will likewise improve. Casting a given spell improves the corresponding magic skill. Spells become more powerful and effective as their skill levels rise. Again, I will elaborate further when we get there. Uh, would you care to hear about the information displayed on the status screen? Uh, absolutely. You can develop the attributes and abilities displayed on the status screen by fighting battles. By fighting. Attributes such as strength and magic will change according to the actions you take in battle. If a character attacks, his or her strength and weapon skill may improve. Similarly, if a character uses magic, his or her spirit, intelligence, and magic level may improve. There are 11 different attributes that can change. 11. God. Would you like to explain... Would you like me to explain these 11 attributes in more detail? Well, since we're here, let's go. HP. If a character loses HP during battle, his or her maximum HP will increase. Participating in lengthy battles can also increase maximum HP. MP. If a character's MP drops during battle, his or her maximum MP will rise. Strength. Attacking during battle will increase a character's strength. Naturally. Stamina. If a character loses HP during battle, his or her stamina will improve. Spirit. Using white magic in battle will increase the caster's spirit. What are you yelling at, cat? She just... Snacks. She has to scream every time she eats something. Anyways, agility. Being attacked by foes will raise agility. Intelligence. Using black magic in battle will increase the caster's intelligence. Magic. If a character's MP drops during battle, his or her magic will rise. Accuracy. As strength rises, so will accuracy. Equipping better weapons will also improve accuracy. Evasion. Being attacked by foes will raise evasion. Equipping a shield will also improve invasion. Magic defense. When foes cast spells on a character, his or her magic defense will rise. As you can see, it never hurts to try all manner of things in battle. Whee! 
That was a lot of things. Anyways, more, uh, more tutorials. Shall I teach you a thing or two about weapons? There are seven weapon categories. Swords, spears, axes, staves, knives, bows, and unarmed fists. Swords, spears, axes, staves, and knives are one-handed weapons that can be equipped along with a shield. It is also possible to equip two one-handed weapons, one in each hand. Equipping a bow requires two free hands, but allows a character to attack from the rear row of the party formation. Fighting unarmed is another splendid choice and could be as powerful as any weapon. Unfortunately, equipping a shield cuts an unarmed combatant's attack power in half. So, if you plan to fight unarmed, probably wise to just skip shields altogether. Yes, indeed. And finally, you want to know more about the command, the flee command, right? You can escape from battles by selecting the flee command. You can also run by pressing the L and R buttons simultaneously when it's time to give the first party member a command. There's no point in fighting a losing battle. If a foe is too difficult, well, you're better off fleeing. However, keep in mind that low agility can make escape impossible. So think carefully before you act. And <laughs> breathe. I've read through all the I've read all the tutorial wizards, so we we kind of have a basic understanding of what the mechanics are in this game now. So, as was alluded to by the the tutorial wizards, this game does not have the normal level up system that the first game has, or really any Final Fantasy after this uh, either. Instead, what we have is everything is split up into individual skill types. So each skill has kind of their own level system in a way. So everything you see here has their own like level system, uh, including weapons and attack, defense, etc. And the name of the game is the more you use it, the better you get. So. The more damage you take, the higher your health gets. The more you use a sword, the better your sword skill gets. Uh, the more hits you take, the higher your defense will get. The more you hit things, the higher your attack will get, etc, etc. The more you use magic, the better your magic gets. So It's, it's very much a practice makes perfect type of system. Anyways, you're in the Rebel Hideout in the town of Altair. Thank you for letting me know. Howdy. Gordon, the Prince of Kashwan, is hiding out here in Altair. I don't know what happened, but nothing has made him lose faith in himself. Well then. Beat the shit up your enemies with a shield. Dude, it's the Goofy method from fucking Kingdom Hearts. Just beat the shit out of him with a shield. Also, there was a chest there. He gave me a potion. Easy chest. Uh, Princess Hilda fled here when Finn was sacked. She's doing a remarkable job of leading the rebel army while His Majesty recovers. Indeed. We've got some beds. So one thing to know about chess, um, so if you remember at the end of the first Final Fantasy, I didn't unlock like all the like extra artwork or whatever. Basically I didn't like do a true 100% of the game. That's because I did not open every single chest in the game. Uh, I still don't care about opening every single chest in the game. I will complete the bestiary though. I will, I will 100% this again. <clears throat> but when it comes to the chests, <laughs> I don't know about that. Anyways, outside of the uh, place, so let's just check out Altair here. So, first off, what's up? I'm Paul, greatest thief in all the world. They've yet to invent a loot I can't burgle or steal. You know this guy's important because he has a portrait. The Imperial coffers have kept my purse fat with gill lately. Yeah, well, what about the Wild Rose? Ah, I never steal from the Rebels. You can be sure of that. My home is was in Finn, too. I can't even go home now that the Empire's occupied the city. <clears throat> All right. Days to be had. You, you, very true, Q. Very true. This is the town of Altair. The Imperial forces haven't been deployed this far out yet. Eh, I suppose it's only a matter of time, though. Yeah, probably. All right, so here's a armor shop. Here's a weapon shop. We'll go in the shops in a minute. Tobul, the fellow over in that weapon shop, is one fine blast blacksmith he is. I think something's been bothering him lately, though. Indeed. Uh, here's a magic shop, and then we're at the city outskirts, so if we go any further east, we'll just leave. 
Paul's a skilled thief, but don't worry. You can trust him. He only steals from the Imperials. A uh, Robin Hood, if you will. Here's the... Uh, is this the... Uh, yeah, this is the revival place. I forget what they called it. <clears throat> it's like the church from the first game, except it's not a church, I guess. Anyways. Hello, who are you? My name is Gordon. I was once a prince of Kashwan. Now I'm nothing but a coward. Coward. When my brother Scott fell in battle, I abandoned my kingdom and fed, fled here. Yeah, what do you know about the Wild Rose? Ah, oh, so you've asked to take up arms in the struggle? I'm so afraid Hilda will turn me away that I haven't even asked her. Been stalling here. Just a spineless coward. Go ahead, laugh. I deserve it. <laughs> coward. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <clears throat> Spineless coward. And here's an item shop. I think that's every NPC here. Yeah, that just leads to the exit. So that's out here. You're a pretty short, uh, pretty small place. So <clears throat> now it's time to think about uh, our party setup. So here's our inn, by the way. It works just like the inn in the first game. Pay a fee, sleep, uh, health and magic, and everything is fully recovered. So, uh, we need to think about what we got here as far as our team. So, at the start of the game, each of our characters come pre-equipped with their own, uh, uh, set of equipment. Equipment was the word I was trying to think of. Uh, so, Firon comes pre-set with a broadsword, a shield, and some armor. Uh, Maria's got a bow and just some clothes. And then Guy has an axe and some leather armor. Uh, they each have, like, their own default uh, stats and stuff. And then Maria's also defaulted to the back row. I'm going to flip, turn this uh, whole thing upside down, and here's what I'm going to do with everybody. Well, for one... Let us go ahead and unequip everything from everybody. Because I am going to do this in a way that I don't think uh, the did was intended for these characters. So here's everyone's default stat values. Firon has 30 HP, 13 attack. Maria has 20 HP, 10 attack. And Guy has 40 HP, 15 attack. You would think Guy would be like, you know... Heavy attacker and stuff. Maria would be, yeah, support. That's not what I'm gonna do. Maria is gonna be my knight. So I'm gonna give her the equipment that uh, Furion had. So I'm gonna give her this broadsword as well as the shield. How much is that? It actually lowers her attack. Whipping the shield. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Or no. Equipping the. Uh, I don't fucking know. Anyways. Shut up, me. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna give her the leather armor as well. Uh, Guy is actually gonna be my support because I think it'd be funny that the guy who can't, who is uh, the least proficient at speaking, uh, is my support. Knows all, is the intelligent one, knows all kinds of magic and shit. So uh, that's what he's going to be. I'll just put the clothes on him, fuck it. And I'll give him a bow. Furion, I think... What I'm going to do with him is... I'm going to make him a berserker. He's going to be just... Unarmed. I'm not going to give him any weapons or armor. He's, so he's going to be my berserker character, basically. <clears throat> I think. And also, it is actually important which hand I equip uh, things to them, because if you look here at the status screen, uh, each character actually has a dominant hand. Luckily for all three of the starter characters, or, like, all three of these guys, uh, they're all right-hand dominant, but there are some left-handed characters that we'll come across later. <clears throat> so. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of formation, we're gonna move Maria to the front row, we're gonna move Guy to the back row. Although, hmm. I almost wanna keep everyone in the front row. 
Yeah, I'll keep Guy in the front row for now, but I'll probably start moving him to the back row in certain situations, I think. But, uh, I got 400 gil to spin here, so might as well spend it. I've also already taken 700 steps and have done absolutely nothing. So, let's see. Oh, hello. Ah, oh, what could you want from me? I'm just an old man. Oh, that geezer acts as just a cover. My name's Taboul, and I'm the best darn blacksmith in the rebel army. That's cool. That's all I have to say <laughs> right now. I'm sure we'll be able to learn more from him uh, as I learn stuff. Um, the reason why I kind of want to flip-flop Guy from front row and back row is I kind of want him to use staves. But I think that's a front row... Like, I don't think I can do anything with it. Uh, from the back row. So, hmm. I don't know. Also kind of want to maybe use pole arm. I don't know. Like, I want to use the default weapons, but at the same time, I don't. <laughs> that makes sense. Meow. Um, like, just to be different. Uh, eh. Fuck it. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna give Maria a polearm. Fuck it. We're gonna give her the javelin. Alright. Instead of a sword. My team is going to be a unique team. Also, I should probably know, because I haven't done this yet today. Um, I've never actually done a full playthrough of this game ever before. Unlike the first game, where I've played it in the past. Uh, like, played all the way through in the past. I have ne I've only just like, barely played a little bit of this game. So... I've... I've not done... played much with this game. So this is gonna be a mostly blind playthrough, which is gonna make my decision of what I'm doing with the team even dumber, but... <laughs> fuck you, it's my playthrough, I'll do what I want. Anyways, let's head to the magic shop, because I want to purchase a Cure Tome. Two of them, actually. Because I want to teach Cure to Guy, because he's going to be my main support guy. And then I also want to teach Cure to Maria for, uh... Because it's always good to have it, a uh, backup healer. Now, I only have 120 gil left, so... Let's head to... Uh, item shop here. We have three different vendors in the item shop. So we have potions... Eye drops, yada yada yada. Uh, other things. Phoenix Downs, which I'm probably gonna need some. Eh, these games are so comfy. Once we got the past a very depressing intro, this is very comfy. Anyway, let's go to the armor shop and see what I can buy with my last little bit of money. Alright, let's get some leather gloves for the, everyone, and I don't think I can afford anything else, so... We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give everyone nice hats later. So it's good for you on some leather gloves, increase his defense, increase Maria's defense, and as well as Guy. Everyone gets a defense plus one from, uh, the gloves. Yeah, that won't be for another, like, 20, 30 hours, Reaper. Just go ahead and save. By the way, I am, just like in FF1, I am playing this on an emulator, just for, like, convenience sake, because it's much easier to capture and play this on an emulator than on an actual PSP. I do own an actual copy of this game, though. See, see the... Do, 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 you, do you see the UMD? No, because it's not in the frame. There it is. Yeah, so, I'm legally emulating this game. <laughs> It probably is gonna suck. I, I can't... I can wait, actually, for the bestiary shit. But I think that's everything done in Altair, so let's just head out to Adventure now. Finally, a half hour later. Here's our world map. Um, one thing to note is that it looks a little bit different. Also, there's just an airship flying through. It looks a little bit different from Final Fantasy 1's map because... 
Something unique, uh, unique. Well, I don't know about unique, but interesting about the Final Fantasy franchise is while each sequel uh, adds a number to the count, these stories and worlds and characters are completely separate from each other. So there's not a single thing, in, character world-wise, in Final Fantasy One that's in this game. It's a completely separate universe. Of everything so there's that anyways let's just get out and uh, get in our first battle against a group of five leg eaters so again this the fight commands work just like the first game it's all turn based and everything so we'll just uh, we'll just fight and select the front leg eater and then once they die my team will auto select a different target so, I'm expecting a lot of uh, battles to, a lot of attacks to miss at the beginning of the game because of accuracy. But hopefully it'll get better quickly. We didn't actually miss a single attack that time. There's also a way to cheese. Because of this game's very unique uh, XP system, uh, there's a way to like cheese the fuck out of your stats, which I'm going to make an attempt at not doing. But I will explain it in the next battle, so I'm just going to go ahead and because, again, in order to make magic stronger and to gain magic, you got to use magic, so I'm going to be spamming the shit out of Cure. Hey, we got 6-3 gil. HP, stamina, strength, oh god, things increased already. Alright, so, uh, first things first, uh, we had some skill ups, so... Uh, I forget who got the HP. I The stuff scrolls by so fast at the end of the battle, I can't keep up, but we got some skill increases, so here's Furion now. Um, I don't think he got anything increased. Maybe... Uh, I don't know, actually. I don't think he anything increased. But he is almost level 2 in unarmed combat now, which is what that progress bar is for. Uh, Maria is also almost level 2 on pole arms and shields. And her health I increased, I think. Yeah, it increased. It went from 20 to 25. Yeah, you gotta spend MP to make MP. That's cool. And then Guy. Uh, got a little better at bows. And I believe... His magic skill increased, I think. I don't know. Luckily, outside of battle, I can use Cure as well. To uh, heal. Again, I'm going to be spamming the shit out of this. Good thing it only costs 1 MP. And outside of battle, it also works towards uh, leveling up, so... Uh, there's that. Anyways, let's go to the Beastiary. Just press the X button. And uh, here's our first monster in the Beastiary, the Leg Eater. Basically, I guess, the goblin of the game, since it's the first monster and one of the weakest. Sort of. But every monster has their own stats and what kind of drops they can get, as well as weaknesses and resistances. They're resistant to body and mind. Hmm. There's also a, they also have a third uh, stat uh, type called uh, absorption, which is what one of the tutorial wizards said. Some, some monsters will absorb certain elements. But, um... I guess we'll just head north here, head up this bridge. I uh, can't go that way because it's covered in mountains. And let's just fight. Some leg eaters and some hornets. So, um, one thing you can do about cheesing the battles in this game is not only can you target enemies with your attacks, you can also target your party. So what you could do is you could be like, I could like fight everything here and leave like one leg eater left, for example. And then just constantly beat the shit out of my party and heal, and beat the shit out of each other, and heal, etc., and get a, just big stat buffs. I'm going to avoid doing that, because... Well, I don't want to cheese this. Uh, I want to I be legit. As legit as I can be, at least. Now, will I have to do this in the future? Depending on how hard sections of the game get? Maybe, but I'm not going to try my best not to. 
I know Furion has only lost 2 HP, but again, I'm going to use Cure as much as possible to level it up as quickly as possible. Um, also, uh, Furion is poison, but don't worry. I don't have to worry about that because he should no longer be poisoned now. Hey, we got Fording Gill. Uh, weapon levels have increased. And that's it. Weapon levels have increased. Also, uh, poison actually wears off in this game. It doesn't persist. Thank fuck. But yeah, now everyone's uh, level 2 in their specified uh, weapon type is good. Let's go ahead and, again, use a cure on Furion. He's only lost 2 HP, but gotta level it up. We doing this? Sorry, piss. God, could you imagine being one of those creatures and just like staring at this group of three people just constantly just whacking each other and healing each other and whacking each other and healing each other? That'd be the funniest shit. Actual funniest shit. Height of comedy. I'm really glad the poison, by the way, is like something that can wear off. I can even wear off like in battle. Like, if you're on... I don't know, like... You just check and be like, oh, okay, I'm not poisoned anymore. Hi, Gliber! What's up, Gliber? How we doing? Thank you for the raid. Welcome to uh, Final Fantasy 2, where Firion just gained some health and strength, I think. It's cool. Let's heal him a little bit. One more cure, and guys, cure will be at level 2, which is good. Anyways, I hope you had a good stream. And everything. That's a 63 damage. Good lord. Unarmed is strong in the beginning. Alright, there we go. And strength increase from Guy. Thanks to his bow use. Uh, I don't think there's anything over here. I think it's just an alternate way to, uh, get to this area. So let's just fight more leg eaters. I have to say, this battle theme goes. I think I might like it more than the first game's battle theme. God, here we go. Here comes the missing everything. Ugh. I'll be glad when our, uh... Our uh, accuracy goes up. Oh, here's a little... Little, little place. Village? Hey, we made it Gatria. What was the original system for Final Fantasy II? The, uh, family... The Famicom, or... Which is what the... NES was in Japan. Released in 1988. All right, well, we've made it here. We might as well talk to the locals. This is the village of Gatria. Finn is just over there across the lake, see? Indeed. We have an inn here. Howdy. Please come in. Cost five gil to restore health, restore health and magic. I'll do that in a moment. We'll, we'll do that in a moment. Instead, let's just... Uh, browse around. Got our item shop, which probably sells the same things as in uh, Altair. Here's a wizard. The Imperial forces have occupied Castle Finn. The gates are drawn and no one can enter. And with Imperial troops and monsters roaming the streets, the city isn't, needed, isn't any better off. Unfortunately. Gatra and Altair haven't fallen into the clutches of the Empire yet. But once the Dreadnought is complete... Nothing will be able to stop the Empire. That's the thing we're going to be hearing a lot of, the Dreadnought. And kind of important. Anyways, here's a... Uh, the, uh... Armor shop. Holy fuck, I couldn't think of the word armor. Alright, so everyone has leather gloves. Uh, let's go ahead and buy three leather caps so everyone has some head armor. And I might buy some leather armor for Guy, since apparently 
it's better than what he's wearing. So, Leather Cap will give everyone a plus one in uh, defense. Um, I think I'll save my money for now in terms of the leather armor. This just leaves the city, right? Yeah, okay. I can never tell what, where the city limits are. Here's a weapon shop. I didn't I completely miss this. We have a javelin, broadsword, axe, and bow. So I think pretty much similar uh, stuff. Yeah, E.T. was like the final straw. It, it didn't single-handedly crash the games industry, but it was the final straw. Oh, there's a pub just on the outskirts of Finn. When the Empire invaded, the barkeep didn't make it out in time. They say he's still working there, pouring drinks for the Imperials. Interesting. And I think that's that's just Gatria. It's just a little tiny village. Yeah, that's this entire place, so... Basically just a quick stop on our adventure. Not much else to it, so let's go ahead and sleep at the inn. Uh, spend five gil to sleep, restore our health and magic. Yeah, TLDR, back in those days, uh, anybody could make an Atari game and they didn't have to like go through any sort of QC or anything, they could just shit it out. So long as they had the resources to program it and throw it onto a cartridge. <laughs> like they didn't need approval from Atari to release it or anything, so, uh, yeah. But, um... Anyways, that was Katria. Uh, let's go ahead and do a quick save, just cuz. Saving often sounds like a good idea. I like the, how this game has a step counter. I can't wait to, for that to go up into, like, maybe the millions. How are we looking here? So... Fear runs level 2 on unarmed combat. It's also got level 2 accuracy. I think that's what that means, and... I don't know if that means he's 91% of the way to level 3, or if his accuracy is 91%. Uh, his strength has gone up one. Ray is looking all right. Level three in her uh, skills or in her uh, equipment. The guy's doing pretty good for himself. He actually has ten intelligence, which is tied with Furion, so that's cool. Um. Before I go any further, I do want to fight some more things as I head south back to uh, Altair, because I do want to buy some black magic. And I figure the battles we face on our way will uh, give me enough cash to get some black magic. I'll probably only be able to afford one spell, but that's one more than zero, so... I love the silly freaking uh, animation <laughs> characters do when they're selected to do a spell. Hey, Maria's health and stamina went up. Cool. Alright, you know what else is gonna go up? Guy's Cure. It's now level 2. Unfortunately, that comes at the cost of costing 2 more MP, but... It is what it is, so... Alright. These hornets are assholes. I haven't even looked at them in BC area yet. I should probably do that. Okay. And there we go. There's an example of the poison. Temporary poison thing. Because Fearon has recovered from being poisoned. And I think this is a good time to uh, use a level 1. Work on Maria's cure. So I have to use... They don't share stat levels, so... Alright. Oh, Furon's unarmed increase. Maria's HP increased. Now she's at 38 HP. Whoops. So let's go ahead and recover that. There we go. Good and good. They were bundled with PS1, yes. 
I heard that the load times, though, on the PS1 versions of these games are fucking terrible, especially considering what they are. Oh, okay. <laughs> that Hornet didn't want none of our shit. Interesting. By the way, here's the Hornet in the bestiary. We've already beaten eight of them. No weaknesses or resistances. Beaten 21 leg eaters so far. How much gill do I have? 239. That's enough for one spell, at least. So, let's head to the magic shop real quick. And I'll probably stay at the inn as well, just to get my MP back. Um, let's go for a fire tome. Do a fire tome, teach that. Do Guy. So now Guy has black magic in the form of fire! Let's go ahead and sort my items here. There's only three items, but uh, I like to have them sorted. Oh yeah, I was gonna stay at the end for uh, magic rec recovery. I'd be glad when my MP actually goes up. Haven't had any MP increases yet. Or gill to restore. Okay. Take that. Sleep. And now we'll we'll head back to uh I've already forgotten the name of that other place, and then we'll head west from there, because that was that's <laughs> where the linear progress is right now. I meant to use fire for guy. Cause again, you gotta use it to make it better. 109 damage already. Unarmed Furion is gonna be uh gonna be a force to be reckoned with, I think. Lord. Oh shit, we've been ambushed. For a total of zero. <laughs> he hit him, but it did fucking nothing. Oh yeah, that's right, I can multi select with the spell, so I can either select one uh, enemy or I can select both uh, multi select enemies with my spell. I think it does less damage if it hits multiple, but. There's that. Alright, Fearon's HP has gone up. Everyone's HP has gone up. Must be one of those cases where, like, we've battled enough to where the we get an HP increase through just battles. And not actually taking damage and shit, which is nice. Hey, goblins! About time we've seen you. How you, how you guys doing? Doing good? Not for long. Fucking hell. Whoosh. Alright. Cool and good. Uh, okay, so. Let's do some more. I was, I was gonna say, wait. Did we did we take damage? No, we, <laughs> we got leveled up. That's why our health is, uh... I say leveled up, their health increased, that's why. Everyone was not at max health. Anyways, uh, heading west here from, uh, what was this place called? Gatria? Gatria, yeah. Yeah, 157 damage. Uh, Furion has some Fists of Fury, apparently. Because, good lord. Look at that, 126. Yeah, we're gonna head west here. Let's go ahead and find the goblin beast area, which is all the fuck the way over here. Number 96 for some reason. It's Q. Q's a goblin. I don't know why it's so far in the beast area, but there we are. Alright, this is where it kind of becomes a blind playthrough, because at this point I have no idea where I'm supposed to, where I'm going or where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> I will let the uh, terrain guide me. Okay, bye. So, my instinct is telling me to go south. Alright, that's a dead end. Oh!
I went too far south. I forgot about the fucking peninsula. Um, run for your fucking life. Alright, well we died. <laughs> First death of the game, let's go!